I'm imagining we don't have a music orb. No, it's our place, not here. No? All right. I'm going to know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. familiar with the invocations of the Lutheran Church. So, I'm going to wing this. An invocation is an invitation of the power and the graces of God and the great being. The essence of that invocation, we are all taught, is love. So I call upon the essence of love and the essence within every one of you to unite and join at this moment, and thank you for coming. So may it be. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Since this is kind of a, how should I say, um, winging it in some senses. By the way, thank you so much for accompanying us. That's great. Thank you. First of all, let me start out by saying, good morning. Good morning. Hey. All right. The scriptural reading is going to be approached a little differently. Um, Working under the premise that channeling is inspired and that our channeled messages are inspired or inspirations. Look back on the Bible and many of our holy pieces of work, our scriptures, regardless whether it's Christian based or if it's the Talmud or even the Quran. Or the words of Confucius, or Lao Tse, think of them as inspired channeling. Today we are, if you get online, if you happen to get on the, the internet, there are a number of websites that have channeled information. Recently, in the last eight months, I've been pretty well, how should I say, studying many of these channeled messages. The one I'd like to read as a scripture is one I was going to complete the sermon with, but I'm going to kind of segue here. This is from Archangel Michael. The passport to ascension is love. In an hour with an angel, uh, in an hour with an angel, with Archangel Michael on August 6th, Graham Duyea interviews um, Steve Beckow, who is a channeler, who, who channels the messages primarily of, of Archangel Michael. This is probably one of the most informative interviews that, have, that they have heard from Archangel Michael. He answers many questions, like, will the Earth disappear from the third dimensionality when we ascend? Will children and pets need preparation to ascend? Will our houses and apartments be the same? Will we arrive with all our powers instantly available to us? To open it, 
he channels and says, let us begin by reigniting yet again my bright flame of truth, the bright flame of blue. Within each of your hearts, your throats, your crown, your mind, your very being, do not dismiss what has already taken place. I'm sure you're all aware of it, in, on some level or not, I'm sure you're all aware of it, that we are going through an ascension pro process. 2012 is not the end. It may be the end of a recorded time. In fact, I rather remember a, a cartoon that's one of my favorites where two minds are standing together looking over the calendar and the one says, well, you're going to screw with somebody's mind. <laughs> I think it's a very important and poignant lesson right there in itself that spirit has no time. God does not wear a Rolex or a Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> um, we learned that quite powerfully, if you remember, Alice, when we were in Egypt, <laughs> in which everything was on Egyptian time. <laughs> and when it happened, it happened. When it didn't, oh well, it'll happen tomorrow. So do not dismiss the fact that there is ascension going on. There are many, in fact, a majority, who are not consciously aware of the many shifts and changes that are taking place within our bodies, within our minds, and without, within our very beingness. <clears throat> Nevertheless, that does not mean that the shift is not already well underway you know that this is not going to be a short process, but that it has begun. One of the topics I wanted to, to embrace, if you will, and one I've been wrestling with right now, is the concept of patriotism. And I think that's one of the things that our nation, and indeed the world, is dealing with as far as the ascension process. When I look at the word patriotism, I remember back in my childhood, I remember singing the Stars and Stripes Forever and getting that incredible feeling of, of being proud of where I live. Saluting the flag. I was just a teen when Hawaii and, and Alaska was then admitted and now then at that point changed the design of the flag to 50 stars. You know, saluting the flag, even praying to God in school. We don't do that anymore. It's not appropriate. It's not politically correct. It's not whatever you want to say. And it feels so alien to me. However, I look back and I remember a scene, and please veterans, don't take offense by this because I actually mean it with a great deal of honor. My father was a veteran. He was a Navy man. He served in the Second World War in the Pacific Theater under Admiral Halsey. I was very proud of my dad. Um, he lived a very good life. He lived through all of that in the Second World War. But remember the time when I was a junior in high school and I had already started planning to go to junior college in Wyoming. That's another long story. But Dad thought it was necessary because he was concerned about the draft. And he wanted me to have the best possible advantages, so he thought it would be best to enlist. So we went in to the recruiting office and we sat down for what was, I guess, about a 40-minute meeting. I sat there very silently. I really didn't speak up too much against my father or any of his decisions. Everything was laid out in front of me, and I had no input. Finally, the officer looked at me and said, you're not saying anything. Uh, are you following? I said, oh, yes, I'm following. 
I knew most of what you were talking about. I said, now, however, I have a problem. I have a very big problem. And he said, oh? I said, yes. I don't agree with the job description. I don't understand what you mean. I said, I don't believe in war as the solution. I also don't believe in the present situation as being a solution. We were not invited to help, and we're there. I said, we're losing a lot of our men because we are there. I am not finding fault with the men that are there. They are doing the job that they are assigned and asked for, but I do not believe in it. I said, if push comes to shove, I am a conscientious objector. With that, the meeting ended. We walked out to the car, got into the car. My dad was very quiet. He sat there, he didn't even put the key into the ignition. I'm looking over and I thought to myself, oh crap, I'm in trouble. I opened my mouth, oh boy. And I look over at my dad and he has tears running down his face. And I went, oh boy, <laughs> am I gonna get a lecture? And I said, are you all right, dad? And he said, yeah. I'm very proud of you. Huh? I'm very proud because you finally spoke up for what you truly believed. And that's what I fought for in World War II. Let's take a look at two terms. Belief. In the basic dictionary, belief is an acceptance of a statement that is true or that something exists. For instance, his belief in God. A belief that solitude nourishes creativity. <coughs> it also deals with trust, faith, and confidence in someone or something. The belief in the democratic politics. <coughs> I've still got belief in myself. Hypocrisy, on the other hand, is the practice of claiming to have moral standards or beliefs to which one's own behavior does not conform or pretense. Let's watch that. Even as light workers, we find ourselves boxed in, in corners, by our beliefs. We see other light workers that we may judge or feel are not necessarily doing the work that they are assigned or the work that they believe in or the work they should be doing, that's a judgment. We need to stop. Remember, our neighbors, our light workers, are the reflection of ourselves, just as we are the reflection of God's love. Hence, I have a problem with war, arguments, <laughs> that sort of thing. I have to back off and I have to look at it far more objectively. I think that's what a lot of these articles that are coming about on the internet are talking about. And ironically, that is in every inspirational message. I read not a lot of the Koran. I've read a basis of it. it smacks a lot of the Old Testament as the Old Testament I read when I was a child, not the newer versions which have been watered and reinterpreted. We have to remember that, that a lot of our holy literature and holy texts have been altered, edited, so that the masses, the people can understand them. I think it's one of the reasons why I love the King James Version, because there is a poetry in the verse. And I was very, very much enthralled with the poetry of Shakespeare and Marlowe, so forth, the Elizabethan times. It is a language we don't understand today, unless you go to the Renaissance Fair and then it's, <laughs> it's put on more like a burlesque show. The seriousness, the seriousness and the beauty of the words were in King James, and I liked that. I liked that. It felt good. The Quran, getting back to the Quran, 
there are some very, very harsh verses that I can relate with the Old Testament. It was, God was viewed differently. God also served through man a different perception. Today, we have changed, and one of the radical forces that changed that was Jesus Christ. Going on with the rest of the messages that I wanted to share with you, your clearest indicator of what is taking place within this ascension process is your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. It is the core of your being, your knowing, and deciding that you are choosing love. That you are more joyful, less restless, less impatient, and yet at the same time more eager to embrace the new adv adventure and to let go of the old third reality of duality, of polarity, of all the false, par false paradigms that have been created by this third dimension. In your physical form, begin to feel yourself being reconstructed. And we would suggest not only in the external, but from the inside out, because much of this is occurring with the activation of parts of your brain, your glands, your organs, your bone marrow, your subatomic structure, even your DNA. All of this, the shifts are from carbon to crystalline, crystalline based. So also pay attention to your physical form. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm paying attention to my physical form. <laughs> now there has been a lot said and a great deal of discussion about ascension symptoms. Actually, there are signs of cosmic flu, dizziness, depression, Frequency shifting, not only so that you can hold a higher frequency and maintain a higher frequency, but because you're already holding on more energy, higher frequency, and more love. More light than you have ever held before within your being. <laughs> Remember, we are living in a third dimensional state. In order to ascend, we must allow this to happen. And I think every one of us here that's sitting has accepted that in part of their karmic agreement. Now, what does this mean in a physical way? First of all, it means that if there are situations, mental, emotional, causal, or any level, on any level at all, that are within your physical form, and they are, these will come to the surface for love, for release, and for elimination. <clears throat> One of the most important things I've learned from the Course in Miracles is a very, very important phrase, and I can thank Helga for that, <laughs> I can truly, for introducing me. One of the ways of releasing the negativity I find very important is a simple phrase, I release you to free myself. I release you to free myself. Any anxiety, any hatred, any aggression, anger, take a few breaths. I release you to free myself. All right, I want to try something. Everybody, close your eyes, take a moment, think back to the last moment you had an aggressive attitude, anger, something that upset you, grief, unhappiness, stress. Think of that. Focus on that now. Don't do anything, don't surround it with light. I want you to think on that negative situation, just for a moment. Okay, take a deep breath in. 
release it and say, I free you to release myself. I free you to release myself. I free you to release myself. Deep breath in. Now ground the white light and the white positive healing into your being. Let it be. Excellent. You may come back to reality. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> First of all, the penetration of each of you during this time of transition by mother, father, the one God, the one creator, by your own guides, by your brothers and sisters of the stars, is not lessening. In fact, it is increasing. As the healing takes place, what you are going to find is that you are going to feel more vibrant, younger, younger in health, younger in human sense of word, and for our sense of young, and young sense is very different. But soon you remember all of that. Do not think that this process is completely simple because we spoke about it. This is a human misconception, and it is a misconception of your society because there is a belief system that you are fed so quickly and so much of the information that you think, oh, I read that before. Oh, there, it's done. That is not so. You have to repeat it. You have to continue it if you believe it. This is your service to help ground the light, not just within society, but within yourself. And the healing and the love, this is the essence of the Creator. Ground that in with the self, then you can change the world. So may it be. Amen. At this point, let us have the love offering by the outcome itself. Our dreams don't always turn out as we expect them to, but the Creator has given us the ability to dream. Actually, we are the only of His creation that do dream. Lately, while talking to my dear friend Sandy Bish, she had related that about four years ago she had this dream to, fly, to go to Florida. This week she is going to Florida to live. And she has a house and she will be leaving the people that she has made connections with even within the last two years. And it's been extremely difficult. Four years ago, it would have been easy for her to drop everything and just move down to, the, to Mickey's sandbox. Now it's extremely difficult because she's made connection with so many different people. Not only here at St. John's, but also at Celtic Myth and Moonlight. And yes, even at Redner's. <laughs> you will be missed know that, but you will still be in our hearts. Don't stop dreaming. And for the little ones, encourage them to dream. One more note that I'd like to share, which I've repeated before, and I think it's a good lesson. A very dear friend of mine who's a spiritual advisor, Garrick, he is a counselor and life guide. Um, he channeled this from his higher sources, and I've read it before, I know, but I think it, it's good to repeat. Be careful of your thoughts, as nothing exists in the world that did not first exist as thought. Thought is the root of creation. 
pay attention to your words, for everything you say is the expression of your thoughts and beliefs. Ah, revelation. When we're not doing that, it's hypocrisy. <laughs> words are more powerful than thoughts and set creation into motion. It was Ben Franklin, I believe, that was quoted to have said, the pen is mightier than the sword. Be resolute in your actions, but certain of the words from which they arise, because actions create all that is. All begins, however, as thought and belief. All that you see in your world is the result of your ideas about it. So may it be blessings of light. Dee, would you lead us in toning? I do what you call sacred toning. It's a very old, ancient way. We, every one of us has it within us because you're allowing the spirit just to come through your soul, soul, your heart, your mind. Just totally spiritual freedom. We keep forgetting that our 